Hey, thanks for stopping by my channel. Today I'm dealing with a 2004 Nissan Sentra. I'm having a problem with my speedometer is not working, as well as my odometer is not working, and the check engine light's on and I'm getting code P0500, which is for the vehicle speed sensor, or the VSS. This is what the new speed sensor looks like. It has an adapter on top for the electrical connection and then this piece with the teeth on it sits down inside the transmission and there's a o-ring here that seals it to prevent debris from falling into the transmission so this is the culprit one other problem I'm having besides the P0500 is the overdrive is flashing on the dashboard as well when I start the car it flashes anywhere from 10 to 15 times that's another symptom of a bad vehicle speed sensor I have a video uploaded already uh, this works on Nissan's it's a self diagnostic tool to see if your uh, instrument cluster the cluster is bad and needs to be replaced so I'll put that link up above I did that diagnostic and it's not the cluster on my car so that's why I'm proceeding with the VSS. The first thing you want to do before you start swapping out the, the old part for the new part is disconnect your negative battery terminal. Anytime I'm working on anything electrical on any car I always disconnect the negative battery terminal just to play it safe so there's no charge in the engine or electronic components anywhere. Now this should be a relatively easy fix you only need a couple of things. You need a 10 millimeter socket, which is this. I'm using a small, probably a four inch extension bar and a ratchet. I'm also using a magnetized dish. So when I take the bolt out, I can plop it in here and I don't have to go searching for it. Okay, now the location of the VSS on this Nissan Sentra, it's pretty much similar for uh, any Nissan. I'm on the driver's side right now and this is the brake fluid reservoir so if you look down over here I'll point to it this is the VSS right down here okay that's where the VSS is located right there you can see the yellow cap is the brake fluid reservoir and just down there on top of the transmission is where the VSS is. This gray piece is the electrical connection. It has a thumb tab on it that you push down on and that'll slide off. The VSS is held in by one 10 millimeter bolt which I'm pointing to right now. It's that rusted bolt right there and that's 10 millimeter. So before we do anything I'm gonna use some compressed air and just blow any debris away from the sensor that's on the car so when I take it out, nothing falls into the transmission. Obviously when you're doing this, you want to work on a cold engine. Now I just went to disconnect the wiring harness, uh, that gray adapter. It has the red wire going into it and that black wire on the left. And I just went to disconnect it and I noticed that black wire is dangling. So that might actually be my problem. I have that 10 millimeter bolt loosened so I'm just gonna take that on out it's just very tight down there to try to videotape that but once I broke the the 10 millimeter bolt free I just used the 10 millimeter socket with the small extension I took the ratchet off and just used my finger to loosen it and now I'm just gonna take it off with my fingers all the way because I don't want to drop it this is the bolt I took off, the VSS. If you look, it does have a couple of um, washers on it. So make sure you save those as well because we're going to reuse those. Once I took the bolt out, the 10 millimeter bolt, I was able to turn the sensor, you know, left and right, right and left. And as I did that, I could see the thumb tab. I couldn't feel it before for some reason. 
So it was in like this into the sensor and there's a tab right here. You just push in, hold it in and the harness will come right off the sensor. So that tab is facing your windshield just like this and it's right there. Okay, that gray piece is the harness and you can see the red wire coming out of the back of the harness. Now in my case, I don't know if I can get my hand down on this side. There. This black wire was the one I was talking about. It's supposed to be plugged into the back of the harness as well, but obviously as you can see it's disconnected. Uh, at the tip of the wire, the black wire, is what I was talking about. Uh, years ago I brought it to a shop and apparently uh, he used heat shrink because at the tip of the wire you can see this wider piece that's the uh, heat shrink so that has become separated from the harness so now I'm gonna have to try to I'm gonna cut off the end of the black wire where the heat shrink is expose a piece of the wire get rid of the insulation and then try to solder that onto the harness but there's not much meat on the end of the black wire here where it's supposed to go on the harness just to give you some perspective on what I'm trying to do this is the harness that we took off the sensor I clipped off the end of the black wire uh, because the heat, the shrink wrap was on top and there was some solder on the wire itself now the piece of wire that's sticking out of the harness is not very large so what I did I just used some electrical tape and just taped the red wire to this hose and the black wire as well <clears throat> just to uh, give me a better angle on it as I try to solder which I hate soldering I'd rather paint my house than solder so I don't know if I'll be able to film the soldering because I can't hold the camera and do that at the same time. What I also did, I took a couple of pieces of aluminum foil, put them underneath where I'm going to be soldering so I don't get any solder on any hoses or any other wires. Just a precaution. I was able to solder it. Uh, I'm going to let it cool for a few minutes and I'm going to reconnect it to the old sensor and see if uh, everything's working or not. Now while I'm waiting for that solder to cool, the old vehicle sensor is right down there. It's that round plate with the uh, opening for the bolt. I rotated the sensor before I realized that wire was not on. So that's why the hole's not lined up. Now, in your case, it's probably just going to be the sensor that you have to replace. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn back and forth the sensor with the harness unplugged. And there's an O-ring, and it's a tight fit because that's your transmission that it's connected to. So you might need a pair of pliers to gently get enough torque on it to get it out of the transmission uh, it's probably about four inches or so into your transmission so you're gonna have to exert a little bit of force to get it out but go back and forth left and right and then straight up and it should come out then just replace your new sensor put your new sensor in Connect the harness and you should be good to go. The predicament I was having, this is the old connector clip that connects onto the vehicle speed sensor. And there are two wires that are supposed to be on the back of this. The one wire had totally come off and I tried soldering it back together but 
it held for just a short period of time and when I went to reconnect it this other wire came off so as you can see there's nothing there you know to connect another wire to to solder on so what I did was I ordered a new connector uh, as you can see it's the same part and the new one has the pigtail with the wires coming out on the back I already stripped off a piece on this one so I'm gonna strip off this piece and solder it onto the two existing wires that go to the VSS I wrapped up the solder with electrical tape now I'm gonna plug the sensor back in take the car for a ride and hopefully the speedometer will work and the odometer as well as the check engine light should be off as well before you start your car just do a visual of the engine bay make sure you don't leave anything in there the foil or the wire uh, stripper or any other tools make sure that's clean then close the hood and we'll start the car. Okay, let's start the car, see if that check engine light's off. Okay, it's not off. Now it could be one of two things. The reason why the check engine light is still on, it could be that the computer is cycling through its diagnostics and it might clear itself or the speed sensor itself might be bad. What I'm going to do is clear the code with the scan tool, drive the car around for a little bit, and see if the check engine light comes back on. Now, as I said, this wired scanner is showing no codes, but what I'm going to do is just erase it anyway, just to see if the check engine light will go off. Erase yes. And it's off. All right, so we'll see if that comes back on, and we'll see if the speedometer and odometer are working. Uh, the odometer is at 189, 326. We'll see if that goes up, and we'll see if the needle for the speedometer works. All right, let's go see what happens. And the speedometer is working. Excellent. And the odometer just clicked to 327, it was at 326. So everything seems to be working. So it's not a hard fix. Uh, it's just a little cramp where you gotta get your hands into. Just think by doing this repair yourself, you probably saved yourself a good two to three hundred dollars from bringing it to a shop. If this video helped you out, I'd appreciate it if you give a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Have a great day. And by the way, I also have other videos on other car repairs and things to do with home repairs and home maintenance, so you might want to check out my playlist. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.